reopening our meeting. We were in executive session. Um, you'll and we will wait till 703 to actually begin our meeting to allow time for folks to join virtually. Uh, you may notice that things look a little bit different in this meeting. If you're in this room, you will absolutely notice things look a little different. We are adjusting our practices to comply with the recently released State Public Health Order 20-38, which eliminates social distancing requirements and capacity limitations in most venues to include this meeting. For the time being, we are still con conducting a hybrid meeting to accommodate those who would prefer to participate remotely. State Executive Order 2021-079 directs all Coloradans to wear non-medical face coverings in specific indoor spaces when 10 or more unvaccinated individuals or individuals of unknown vaccination status gather. Given that City Council and City staff have overwhelmingly opted to get vaccinated, and we encourage you to do so too, we are under the 10-person threshold and we will not be wearing face coverings during our meeting. Anyone is welcome, however, to wear a face covering if they choose to do so. So uh, while we wait to formally open, I want to remind everyone the way you can provide public comment this evening to our meetings. Public comments can be made under three ways. Any comments that were submitted in writing in advance have been forwarded to council and are included in the will be included in the meeting minutes. If you would like to type a public comment during the public comment portion of our meeting this evening, please click in the ask a question box. You won't be asking a question. You'll be providing your comment in that sidebar and it will be forwarded on to council and included in the formal meeting minutes. If you would like to speak to the council live using your telephone during public comment, please type that in the ask a question box with your name and phone number and staff will contact you to uh, allow you the opportunity to provide comment via your phone. So let's see if we are, we're just 30 seconds shy of that uh, 703 start. Um, and I'll give you a heads up, we're gonna start with a Pledge of Allegiance. So uh, we will, we're close enough. I'm gonna ask everyone to rise and join me in the pledge. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have an amendment to the agenda this evening, and I will look to our Mayor Pro Tem, Kathy Brennick, to make that. I move to uh, amend uh, the agenda with the removal of agenda item 11-2. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have removed that. We've shortened up the agenda. Look at us being efficient with our time already. All right, folks, are there any conflicts of interest this evening? None. 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 Wonderful. Okay, to the business at hand. Um, this is now public comment, and I did uh, briefly explain ways you can provide public comment this evening. Again, comments submitted in advance in writing were already provided to council. You can type comments in the ask a question box right now with your name, address, and phone number, excuse me, with your name and address, and they'll be forwarded to council. And you could also request to speak live via your telephone in that ask a question box. Uh, please provide your name, phone number, and staff will reach out to connect you via your phone to council. Uh, I will look to our clerk to see if anyone has requested to speak with council this evening. Thank you, Mayor. I'm not seeing any requests for public comment. Okay, I'm going to move on to our proclamation and it will let, allow folks if you're still trying to figure that all out. Um, while I read the proclamation, we'll, co we'll check in one more time on public comment. So always excited to acknowledge uh, a holiday near and dear to the hearts of Lo all in Lone Tree and it's our Arbor Day, Arbor Day proclamation. So whereas in 1872, Jay Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees and whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, 
wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Whereas the City of Lone Tree seeks to assist homeowners and property owners in selecting and caring for their trees with ongoing community education in conformance with the forestry plan completed by the Community Development Department in 2018. Now, therefore, I, Jacqueline A. Malay, Mayor of the City of Lone Tree, Colorado, by virtue of the authority vested in me, do hereby officially proclaim Friday, April 30th, 2021, as Arbor Day, in witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the official seal of the City of Lone Tree to be affixed this 20th day of April, 2021. Yay, Arbor Day. <laughs> All right, now I'll check in. Any, any requests for public comment? Thank you, Mayor. I've not seen any requests for public comment. Okay, I will officially close public comment. I will read our announcements. A lot of reading for the mayor this evening. <laughs> All right. <laughs> As always, more information can be found at cityoflonetree.com and lonetreeartcenter.org. And we are thrilled, actually, to be talking about some fun events happening in our community. So first and foremost, public health. COVID community testing at Canvas Credit Union is every day from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please visit the city website for more information and to pre-register. It'll make it a smoother trip for you. Health One COVID Community Immunization, operated by COVID Check Colorado, is happening Wednesday through Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Charles Schwab parking lot. Visit healthonecares.com for more information. And again, a reminder, anyone over the age of 16 in Colorado is uh, eligible for a vaccination. Now, some fun things are happening at our art center. So Arts in the Afternoon, Russian Romance is happening tomorrow, Wednesday, the 21st at 1.30. And there is a performance on the main stage, yay, and there's also a live stream. Passport to Culture, Sensory Friendly, Locomotion is happening Sunday, April 25th, uh, with 1.30 being the Passport to Culture and 4 p.m. being a Sensory Friendly performance happening at the Lone Tree Arts Center main stage. Virtual Classroom Art Appreciation, The Basics, is happening Monday, April 26 at 7 p.m. That is a live stream event only. And Firefall, Firefall Trio with Jock Bartley, Gary Jones, and Steve Weinmeister is happening Saturday, May 1st at 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Again on our stage at the Art Center. We are thrilled with that. All right. Our consent agenda includes minutes from April 6th. Our regular meeting claims through the period of March 30th to April 12th, 2021, and the February 2021 Treasurer's Report. I'll look for a motion on consent. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Wonderful. First up on our agenda this evening, Public Works Resolution 2121. Did I forget something? <coughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. It was in another um, in another um, part of the chat. So oh, if it's OK, it is absolutely OK. OK, I'm going to call. Um, I believe it's from Carol Sorensen. Yep. So I apologize about that. We didn't say we were present. I'm glad it was your mistake and not mine, Jay. No. <laughs> Hello, this is Carol. Hi, Carol. It's the City of Laundry giving you a call for public comment tonight. Hey, Jay, thank you so much. I was just going to send you a note and say, am I doing something wrong? I can't get in. <laughs> it's all Jay's fault, Carol. We've already <laughs> reprimanded him. No, we're just kidding. We're just kidding. Apologies about that, but glad we got connected. Me too. Hi, this is Carol Sorensen. I think I know you all. Tonight I'm calling in on behalf of the Lone Tree Sustainability Team. Uh, my address is 9703 Tallgrass Circle. And I just wanted to invite everyone to join our next uh, community track pickup event. That's on May 15th, which is a Saturday. we are meet at the Fairways Park at 9 a.m. We will have Krispy Kreme donuts and a speaker to talk about a sustainability topic. And then we will disperse into the community to collect our trash. So we welcome 
uh, all members of city council, city staff, or anybody um, in the community or outside the community that wants to come and join us. We'd love to have you. We have a website you can RSVP just so we know how many donuts to get at sustainlt.com, and you can you can register there. So thank you very much for calling me and for the opportunity to invite you all. And thanks for your good work, Carol. We appreciate it. All right. You bet. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, no, absolutely. We always want to give people the opportunity to speak to us. So uh, we are now going to move on to our public works. And it's resolution 2121, a resolution approving an IGA between the city of Lone Tree and Rampart Range Metro District number one regarding emergency repairs to the Sky Ridge Bridge. Linda Michow, our city attorney, will be presenting. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. This is the first of two resolutions relating to the Sky Ridge Bridge repair work um, that we are moving forward uh, to get accomplished. Uh, this resolution is a proposed um, agreement with Rampart Range Metropolitan District number one. Um, Jay, next slide, please. And um, just by way of background and to help frame the issue, I, I know you all know this, um, but the Sky Ridge Avenue Bridge was constructed by that Metropolitan District, Rampart Range, Metro District 1. Um, it was provisionally accepted by the city uh, just about a year ago today or this month. Um, and the probationary acceptance period runs for two years, so it will expire not until May 13th, 2022. Um, the district through that probationary period is responsible for regular routine maintenance and warranty repair work. And the city has the right, but not the obligation to perform maintenance on the bridge. Um, unfortunately, the bridge was struck on February 18th of this year and that circumstance uh, really isn't contemplated in any of the city's current agreements with the uh, Metropolitan District or um, in, their, in our code. Uh, next slide. So we have been working um, in a partnership with the district um, to ensure that the bridge is fully repaired. Um, the city's uh, claim is against the driver's company, which is Solid Rock Excavation. And as I've explained to the city council before, the insurance coverage does include primary and excess uh, policies. Um, the city has retained special counsel, which you uh, approved at your last meeting. That's through Holland Evans and Meredith McDonald. And um, she's just been excellent in helping us um, work through these issues. Um, and the city's also working with CDOT on uh, finalizing uh, bidding and approving a construction contract for the emergency repairs. Uh, next slide. So the IGA itself, um, we obviously will agree to cooperate in all matters relating to the emergency repairs and the claim. Um, the purpose of the IGA is really threefold. One, just to accomplish the emergency uh, repair work. Um, and to determine who is going to file and be primarily responsible for the claim, and then really addressing out-of-pocket costs and um, what needs to be done during this remainder of the probationary acceptance period. Um, notwithstanding anything else in the agreement, each party has agreed to pay their own attorney's fees and costs. Next slide. So starting first with the city's obligations. Um, the city will be the primary point of contact for uh, filing the claim. Um, we have been diligently pursuing the claim already. Um, we will include the district in all substantive communications and meetings. We have been doing that to date. We will continue to do that. Um, they are a partner in this. Uh, we will provide them with status updates and they will be um, providing us input and uh, decision-making approval for substantive um, areas of the uh, emergency repair work as well as the claim. Um, we'll continue to work with CDOT to perform the design and repair work. Um, and the city, just like the district, will be paying for any costs in excess of any payment, settlement, or judgment that is recovered. And then, of course, we'll be assisting the district in maintaining um, its contractors' warranties um, relating to the initial construction of the bridge. 
Next slide, please. The district's obligations are to continue to maintain um, during probationary acceptance um, those portions of the bridge unaffected um, by the accident. They are also going to share obviously 50-50 in costs incurred um, by the city prior to recovery of the claim. So we will be invoicing the district um, for uh, costs that the city has already incurred and that will continue to incur um, prior to any recovery. And um, then they have also agreed to um, cover 50% of any costs that aren't covered um, through insured or insurance settlements or judgments. And they have also agreed to make timely payments to the city, and that is um, stated as 15 days from invoice to the city, from the city. Uh, next slide, please. So next steps, the Metro District um, is still considering this agreement. I believe um, they have a meeting next week and they'll be considering that on Wednesday. Um, we will be moving forward with providing the insurance carriers with the basis and scope of our claim for damages. Um, and that's based on getting some more firm bids um, through the construction contract. Uh, we will be providing project management support to CDOT and uh, we will be separately accounting for costs incurred by the city and invoicing those uh, to the Metro District. Next slide. I'm happy to answer any questions and I believe there's a motion on the following slide as well. Thank you. Any questions on this? I know we have been briefed, but no questions. No further questions. So you know you're in trouble when you start with a public works agenda item and then the city attorney <laughs> <No>. gets up. <laughs> Not, it's not know, the usual a, format. Okay, let, me, yeah. let me think about this a little bit. Now, you are not the uh, presenter I had anticipated. No, actually, uh, I think we're doing the best we can in this emergency situation to kind of right the ship or fix the bridge, as the case may be. So thanks for your good work. And thanks to our partners at CDOT and our partners at Rampart Range Metro District. It's going to take collective effort on all our parts to get this done. So I don't see any questions, so I will look for a motion. I move to adopt resolution 21-21, a resolution appointing an intergo intergovernmental agreement between the city of Lone Tree and Rampart Range Metropolitan District, number one, regarding emergency repairs to the Sky Ridge Bridge. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. All right, now we'll get down to real public works. All right, we'll get our, uh, our director of public works and mobility, Justin Schmeitz, up here where he belongs. Resolution 21-22, a resolution approving a contract between the city of Lone Tree and the Colorado Department of Transportation regarding emergency repairs to the Sky Ridge Bridge. We obviously didn't need an attorney for this one. <laughs> I think I can handle this one. So uh, good evening, Mayor and members of City Council. Thank you for the call a friend uh, for Linda presenting yeah. on that last topic for, for, <laughs> on behalf of Public Works. So certainly it's been a partnership on this very challenging project uh, that was kind of uh, bestowed upon us and our team uh, to work through. Um, we presented at several last study sessions uh, with updates about the, the project um, as well as how much interaction the state, Rampart Range Metro District, the city have all had to get this project moving forward in the most timely fashion possible. This IJ is really getting us ready to go out to our contractor. Um, so next slide. Again, a background, um, the Sky Ridge uh, Avenue Bridge over I-25 at approximately Mile point one nine two point eight zero zero. That okay, was given to me by CDOT. Don't have to show off. I know that was. Public works director. I'm learning something. You know, okay. CDOT gave me that. I figured I'd share it. So, um, <laughs> something new. Uh, but it was struck, obviously, and damaged uh, by an overnight vehicle traveling northbound on I-25 on February eighteenth, twenty twenty-one. Um, the exterior girder of span two. Again, I'm just putting all the information that you'll see in there, but on the south side was severely damaged and needs to be replaced as quickly as possible. This was an agreement. Our uh, we had a design team look at it, CDOT's experts, staff bridge at CDOT, our team, multiple experts looking at this all came to the same conclusion um, that this needed to be re uh, replaced as quickly as possible. Um, again, we just uh, heard this note, but the Sky Ridge uh, Avenue <laughs> Bridge is currently under provisional acceptance by the city of Lone Tree. Uh, which began after the bridge was originally built on May 13th, 2020, and that expires on May 13th, <coughs> 2022, at which point the city of Lone Tree will assume full ownership and control of the bridge. However, the city of Lone Tree being a city uh, is the one who can legally enter into these agreements with CDOT. 
um, and allow us uh, to have uh, this IJ in place to get their assistance and oversight on this project. Uh, next slide. Um, and again, I'm just going to highlight really where that comes from. Um, so in accordance with the state of Colorado fiscal rule 2-2 and section 120.8.3, um, some detailed things there, but of the CDOT construction manual, um, it does allow CDOT um, and their chief engineer to approve requests for emergency contracting for things that are deemed an emergency situation. Obviously, this is not a state-owned structure, but they understood the importance of it in the region, the fact that I-25 is directly impacted by the work, and they rose it all the way up uh, to their executive level and their chief engineer for consideration. They did approve the request uh, for the emergency contracting for the repairs that are needed to the I-25 Sky Ridge Avenue Bridge. Uh, structure number Lone Tree 4, that is what we call them. We have six uh, structures in Lone Tree. Each one has a number at the state. And again, state has oversight of all structures that exist. Um, and after it was struck from an overnight vehicle on Thursday, February 18th, 2020. Again, this is a bit of an exception. CDOT does not always do this, um, but it's something that they are willing to partner with us on. Uh, next slide. So to define the CDOT obligations and the city obligations, CDOT agrees uh, to administer the emergency contracting services and oversight for the repair of the Sky Ridge Avenue Bridge, currently under provisional acceptance by the city of Lone Tree. So they will be going out and actually issuing the contracting documents. They will be working with the contractors to get them under contract <coughs> and the emergency processes that CDOT has in place and is used on many, many occasions. They're very familiar with this process, which is an assistance to the city of Lone Tree. CDOT will also continue to perform inspections of the damaged structure until a contractor has received a notice to proceed, at which point the contractor right, will be doing that work inspections. But they're going to take it all the way to that point. Um, they continue to inspect it every week since the strike and provide that data to the city of Lone Tree. There is a, a bit of reimbursement that will be needed uh, for those services. Um, again, that will be reimbursed uh, as part of the claim process. And finally, the state estimates uh, that this effort will not exceed $1.9 million, which they got from the city of Lone Tree and uh, the process that we went through with our designers. Um, and that includes construction. Uh, obviously, CDOT does reserve the right to amend the IGA if that project exceeds the initial estimate. So that's the best guess with the best knowledge we all have today. It would require an amendment if that number does change. Next slide. Um, the city obligations. So the city of Lone Tree will be developing the design of the bridge repairs. We are currently 90% down that process. Um, put together any necessary plans, specifications, and summary of the quantities to go out to bid. Again, we are within days of having that process completed. We will also be providing staff for construction management, inspection, and testing in coordination with CDOT. Uh, so we'll have both CDOT and city staff out there throughout the entire process. Um, we will also be the owner of the water quality permit, obtaining utility clearances if there's any impact on the structure. Again, we don't anticipate many utility clearances. There's not a lot of utilities in that area on that structure, but we are going to have to work and coordinate if needed. And finally, the last item there, um, the city is required to fund the project in full with partners, um, as you just heard on that last presentation in the last resolution. Next slide. So that is kind of the, the breakdown of it. Um, we provided the rest of it. Any questions on either CDOT's role ours or that relationship between? Thanks, Justin. Any any questions? Again, we've been briefed more than we wish we were. <laughs> Wishing this one never happened. OK, no, no questions from council. I think we'll look for the motion. I move to adopt resolution 21-22, a resolution approving a contract between the city of Lone Tree and the Colorado Department of Transportation regarding emergency repairs to the Sky Ridge Bridge. I second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right, now we're on to more public works, but a different face. Jacob James, our city engineer. Uh, we're on resolution 21-23, a resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement between the city of Lone Tree and the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Douglas, state of Colorado, regarding a financial contribution for pre-construction activities related to the I-25 Lincoln Avenue Traffic and Mobility Improvements Project. Good evening, Jacob. 
Yes, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, what we have before uh, Council tonight is a resolution with uh, Douglas County this time for the Lincoln and I-25 uh, study that we have underway. Council was briefed previously on an uh, IGA with CDOT for this exact same project. This is Douglas County's contribution towards this project uh, in partnership with the city. So as council may remember, uh, this project is uh, at Lincoln and I-25 extending from Park Meadows Drive on the west to Oswego Street on the east. It's a study to guide the long-term improvements uh, to the Lincoln I-25 interchange and improve traffic flow and provide Im improved pedestrian and bicycle access along the corridor. There was a previous study done in 2007. Uh, a lot of those uh, recommended improvements were implemented over the years. Uh, this study will build on that based off what has actually happened with growth in the corridor and our projections for the future along the corridor as well. So the, uh, the mobility project was a city of Lone Tree and Douglas County partner um, uh, request Dr. Cog through the TIP program in the 2020 through 2023 cycle. In 2019, uh, the Douglas County, or it was awarded in 2019 with Douglas County as a partner. Uh, this project uh, was awarded with matching funds from the TIP, which uh, Council heard about in the previous presentation. Again, uh, through the TIP uh, program, CDOT is uh, a contributor at 1.25 million at 80% with local matching funds required at 312,500. However, all parties acknowledged um, more, uh, more than that was needed to fully fund the project. So all three entities were at 1.25 million. Douglas County's contribution through this IGA tonight is that 1.25 million and through uh, through additional funding that was received through the TIP, Lone, Lone Tree is now um, at a $1 million contribution with $250,000 option um, if need be at the end of the uh, project. So through that $250,000 amendment, there will be a, a future um, amendment with the CDOT IGA that we'll bring before council to fully codify that um, as soon as that's uh, taken care of. And then again, uh, the city did or is in the means of requesting 500,000 from SpyMed as an additional uh, partner contribution. So the total anticipated study cost uh, remains at $4 million. So our next steps for this project, uh, consultant interviews uh, have been completed and we do expect to start negotiations with the selected consultant as early as next week. Uh, through that negotiation, we'll finalize the scope and fee for, for the professional services and then come back to council with that contract as well. So uh, we hope to be doing that in the near future. Uh, with the project kickoff in spring yet this year, um, alternatives analysis later this year, um, and then uh, uh, environmental clearances in 2021-2022 and conceptual design completed up in around 2023. So that would uh, complete the conceptual phase of this study and get um, get a 30% design about done. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions on this uh, Lone Tree Douglas County IGA. Thanks. This is an important project and I think we're all looking forward to seeing it get started. But do we have any questions? No questions for me. Other than let's get it done. Okay, <laughs> uh, I, I, let's look for the motion. I move to adopt resolution 21-23, a resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement between the City of Lone Tree and the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Douglas, State of Colorado, regarding a financial contribution for pre-construction activities related to the I-25 Lincoln Avenue traffic and mobility improvement project. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And thanks to our Dr. Cog rep for helping that project along with some additional funding. We've got another funding partner to thank. Okay, uh, next up is resolution 21-24, a resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement between the city of Lone Tree and the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Douglas, State of Colorado, regarding a financial contribution for the pre-construction activities related to the C-470 trail over Acres Green bike Ted Bridge project. And again, Jacob is presenting this. Yes, thank you again, Mayor and Council. Second I IGA we have before you this evening, um, which I'm presenting, uh, a lot of IGAs, but the uh, <laughs> second one for me is a uh, contribution from Douglas County to participate in the design services for the Acres Green C470 bike pedestrian trail over cross of the road. 
So this uh, this project will grade separate the existing C470 trail at Acres Green um, with a bridge. Um, and the, the project will obviously improve the pedestrian safety at the intersection, as well as uh, it will be coupled with uh, a traffic signal um, design, uh, which are both projects that were approved through either the HSIP or the TIP uh, cycle funding th through Dr. Cog. Um, Right now, though, we're just talking about construction or uh, design activities. So uh, through this uh, agreement, Douglas County will be providing um, funding to procure a civil engineer for design. The, uh, the contributions are City of Lone Tree will contribute $150,000. Douglas County will contribute $225,000 for an anticipated construction cost of $375,000. We have selected a, a consultant for this project and we expect design to start in May uh, with the design complete in the fourth quarter of this year, going to construction early next year. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions about this IGA. Another good project. Uh, any questions for council? I did, uh, just, a, just a quick one with the, if you could describe the traffic signalization for the pedestrian bikes, that will be on the bridge itself or? Oh, no, sir. Uh, it'll be the actual intersection. will right. will become a signalized intersection for the vehicles. Okay. okay. Yep. And then the grade separation will separate right, well, the, the traffic. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha, for, the, okay. for the uh, trail. No, no bicycles. I know. I was no like, I to visualize what that's going to look like. So, okay. Stop, yield. That'd be very innovative. <laughs> don't, don't. They'll come up with something. <laughs> Brown dog. Uh, all right. I think we're ready for the motion. I'll do this one. I move to adopt resolution 21-24, a resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement between the city of Lone Tree and the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Douglas, State of Colorado, regarding a financial contribution for pre-construction activities related to the C-470 trail over Acres Green Bike Pedestrian Bridge Project. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. A lot of IGAs this evening. Wow. Um, all right, next up, we've got administrative matters, resolution 21-25, a resolution appointing Chuck Norman to the board of directors of the Lone Tree Business Improvement District and Jeff Hallwell, our director of economic development and public affairs is gonna present on this one. Well, good evening, Mayor and Council. This should be a quick one and thank you for your time tonight. Uh, resolution 2125 is an appointment to the Lone Tree Business Improvement District. Next slide. Uh, just a quick summary, the, the BID has been holding a long-term vacancy on the board since uh, the closure of Mellow Mushroom Pizza. Originally, mm -hmm. when that happened, the anticipation was that the uh, uh, True by Hilton Hotel would take that seat. That was a desire of theirs when they were constructing it, and the bid board agreed to that concept. They, they have since uh, chosen not to take on that role. And uh, uh, that said, we're very fortunate to have a, a very active business in the district that owns property um, and is uh, the owner of that business, uh, Gris Brewing Company. And uh, Chuck Norman, who you've seen on other occasions, uh, want to take up that role. And if so, uh, he would be participating in the bid as, in, as early as next month um, on their May um, uh, 7th meeting, I believe it is. So resolution 2125 appoints Chuck Norman to the board and he's uh, ready to take it on. Okay, any questions from council on this? Good. Just extend our gratitude to Mr. Norman for his agreeing to serve. So that with that, I'll look at the motion. I move to adopt resolution 21-25, a resolution appointing Chuck Norman to the board of directors of the Lone Tree Business Improvement District. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. And thanks, Jeff, for your good work on that bid. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our formal agenda with the exception of council comments. I'm exerting mayoral privilege tonight <laughs> and being given the gift of time. Uh, you know, the theme of this evening is we get by with a little help from our friends. It is 420. You guys can figure out the second verse on that. Uh, though that is not the case. I was not that cool 30 years ago when my husband and I got married on this day. This is my wedding anniversary, and I'm actually going to go home and spend a little time with my husband. So council has given me their time this evening. I want to say thank you to them for their great partnership. Thanks to the staff. Thanks to my husband, uh, and uh, we are adjourned. I had a bunch prepared. <laughs> <laughs>